Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of A Splash of Paint, brought to you in association with the SAA Society for All Artists. Today's programme is a colourful collection of practical demonstrations and exercises to inspire your artistic passion and encourage you to try something new. So settle back for 60 vibrant minutes of all the latest creative tips and techniques from some of today's most popular leading artists. Let's get started and take a closer look at what's coming up on today's programme. Fraser Scarf demonstrates how to give your paintings a lift using depth and texture. Peter Woolley demonstrates a simple one-pot watercolour exercise to get to grips with grey in today's Try Your Hand At project. Paul Beatty reveals one of his artistic essentials that he wouldn't be without. Our resident bookworm Henry Malt goes wild in the SAA library with another one of his top reads. Jeremy Ford spreads the secret ingredient for cleaning your stained palettes. And we go down to the farm with Marilyn Alice to capture a colourful rooster. But first, let's start off by taking a closer look at the wonderful world of watercolours and see how lifting paint off from dry watercolour paint can really give a fantastic contrast and almost a 3D feel. You might recognise this from an earlier programme. Just using water and square brushes, or some people call chisels or flat brushes. I've got two sizes. This one's quite a large inch brush, and then I've got a quarter inch, my personal favourite. If you dampen it, the brush, and just lightly squeeze the excess water away from the brush. Now, the better ones are the synthetic brushes purely because it gives you a much cleaner edge. In the water, I want to go in and just kind of wiggle the brush in a horizontal fashion and it will start to lift off colour. Now, you might not see it that clear just yet, but when I go in and actually get the tissue on this, you will see that it takes off these lighter lines and we can do as many as these as we feel. Do them different lengths, otherwise it can look a little bit too static, but it gives a bit of a surface to the water. The smaller brush is perfect for the trees. Again, clean it, give it a gentle squeeze so you've got that little bit of water on the brush. Now the light's coming from this right hand side, so what I'll do is I'll go up the side of that tree now this paint's been on there quite some time and I can actually go up and I can lift colour off the side of that tree and then just get the tissue and literally just wipe it down and can you see it's brightened that edge now you can go in and you can really concentrate that in as much as you want to. You can go up the branches to make them appear as though they're growing from different areas. Let's do the same on this tree as well. Water, gentle squeeze and then lighten the tree. And then just give it a wipe. And where branches grow out in the tree, it's quite nice, just have that little bit of a, little bit of a highlight there. It's quite addictive lifting off, and it's one of my personal favorite tricks. I've been doing this for years, and it always surprises me that when I demonstrate to art groups and do workshops or demonstrations, it, it's one of those things that always has the wow factor to it because people don't necessarily lift colour off. Um, so it's very effective and it's obviously something what I've been doing for a long time. And I learned to do this by making mistakes. How do you correct a mistake? You wash it off. Um, now I'm adding a couple of diagonals to this because it gives the impression of dappled light from the trees. Right at the bottom of the tree, some of the taller trees, you get these real definite roots going in. And you can see where that actually curves up the tree there. And we can do one from this side as well. And these really do make a difference. Now, there's other places you can do this on. In the house, for example, on the corner of a building, if you give it a good scrub three or four times over the same area, just gently wipe it. You can see it just kind of crisps and sharpens the edge up. And also down those columns as well because the Chatsworth House, if you've ever seen it, I'm sure you've seen it on the TV and things, it has got very, very definite columns at the front of it. And this just lifts some of the natural yellow that is underneath off. And it really brings those forward, creating an almost three-dimensional effect. You could also add some ridges to these areas. And you can see the colour coming off. And it's well worth doing, folks. It really does make a difference. And I hope that's given you a bit of a, 
extra tip on how you can really beef up the contrast. Right, it's time for today's Art Bite feature. Let's join SAA professional artist Fraser Scarf as he demonstrates how depth and texture can help give your paintings that little lift. Today I'm going to show you how you can add a bit more depth and interest to an acrylic painting. Now, acrylic paintings are very often kind of left quite flat, um, more like the surface of a watercolour. But of course, with acrylic, you can really sort of go to town on building up texture. And in my paintings, to sort of finish them and give them the sort of professional look, if you like, I like to really sort of build up the texture in the picture and give everything a nice sort of glossy finish. So what I'm going to do, I've got a little sketch I started here, which is by no means finished, but just to show you how I'd go into a picture and work up some texture. I'm going to take a bit of the gloss medium and varnish here. Now, just going to tip a drop of that onto my palette here over some of the paint I'm going to be using. And that just gives the paint more of a gloss when I'm actually using it. I'm not using it as a sort of finished varnish yet. Just trying to give the picture um, a bit more gloss. I've got a sort of uh, roughly textured area here in my picture. And I'm just going to very quickly grab some paint. Now, this is a bit unorthodox, but I often use the end of a paintbrush in order to apply the paint to the canvas. Now, you can use a palette knife, of course, and I will in a second, but I actually like to use the end of the brush because at the same time as you're applying the paint, you can also use the brush to scratch out certain areas of the canvas as well. And depending how thick you want it, you can really build up some nice, densely textured areas in your painting. So I'm just showing now, using this dark burnt umber colour, how I might go about blocking in the dark tones in the foreground of my picture. And I'm usually restricting this kind of treatment to the foreground of a painting because that's where you want to kind of build up texture and strength, which helps with the impression that things are closer to us. Of course, if you want to use a palette knife, you can. So I'm just going to grab some burnt umber and just apply that with a palette knife. That gives you a more sort of dense and thick layer of paint rather than using the sort of end of a paintbrush. And I'm just using the flat of the palette knife and also taking account of the fact that I'm working on a canvas board, which gives you some texture anyway. So just working that sort of over the surface of the paint. And of course, you can scratch into that as well and play around with your textures. Now, one of the great things about painting is the ability to sort of blend things on the canvas. So I'm just going to add some yellow ochre just on the same knife and you can of course blend colours together while they're still wet, more like you would perhaps with an oil paint. You can do exactly the same with acrylic. The interactive ones are great for this because they already have a very nice sort of rich buttery texture more like oil paint straight from the off. So having that straight from the off on your palette also helps to build up sort of texture in your paintings as well. So I'm just using the palette knife to build up some nice thick textures. And of course you could work over the whole surface of the canvas using this technique, adding highlights to the sky, building up texture in your foreground. So don't be afraid to try this if you use acrylic paint. Don't think that you just have to leave it as sort of flat brush strokes. Don't be afraid to get a palette knife out or the end of your brush and really work up some texture in your painting. Just give it a try and it will give your painting a lift and a real depth as well. Thanks Fraser, great tip for building up texture and adding depth and interest to your finished paintings and stop them from looking so flat. Why not give it a go? Well, folks, it's time for a quick break, but join us in part two when popular watercolour artist Peter Woolley talks about tone in today's Try Your Hand Up project. And versatile SAA professional artist Paul Beater reveals one of his favourite artistic essentials that he wouldn't be without. See you very soon.